Right, so my name is Jingbo Wang. I work at National Computational Infrastructure, which is a computer supercomputer center located in Australian National University campus. So today I'm going to address um, different flavor of data accessibility uh, practice at NCI. And um, before I go further, I just wanted to make a comment that FAIR principle is quite useful um, to govern our data management practice. And uh, we use it um, a lot in every single aspect in our data management. So this is a quick overview of the data sets we have. So as, um, as you can see, I've listed here the main data type that we um, um, store at NCI are national collections about climate models, satellite images, bathymetry, elevation, hydrology, geophysics. And those data are quite geospatial focused. But we also have other social science data and genomic sequencing data and astronomy data. So we aim to provide a user with data as a service. As many digital repositories will do, uh, in our data management, we catalog data so that people can query the metadata database to find what we have here. We also publish data through various data services. That's a focus I'm going to talk about in the next few slides. We offer data quality assurance, data quality control, and benchmarking use cases. We provide data through virtual laboratories. We also provide help on data visualization. If I wanted to uh, make something uh, that we are different from other digital repository is because we co-located with HPC facility high performance computing. Given the nature of our large scale of the data, we host more than 10 petabyte research data. So we really want to make good use of the high performance computing here to, um, to advance the science research. So this is the six dot points that I wanted to address today about data access. So I put the red uh, color words to show the difference for each point. So initially I will talk about the, how do we control the data access? And then I'm going to present uh, one example of how do we use persistent identifier to manage data access. Then I will talk about two main data services that we offer at NCI for our users. One is the threads, one, the other one is a G-Ski, which is a more uh, fancy and scalable distributed data server. Uh, finally, I'm going to cover very quickly about the data versioning and the quality of the data. So the first point is about how do we control the data access. Most of our data are coming from our stakeholders such as Geoscience Australia, the Bureau of Metrology, CSRO, uh, universities, and many data has been funded by Australian government, so it naturally fall into CC BY4 license. Some owners also impose that this data should be non-commercial, non-derivative, or share alike type of CC BY. We also have international partners, such as in the European and US, and they impose um, uh, even strict term and conditions if people wanted to access the data. So this is the legal perspective about how do we control the license, the data access through licenses. On the file system, we actually hard-coded the data access control using ECHOs. So this is a way how do we separate different group of people access the same same data. So we have basically for each collection, we have two access group. The first group is has the read and write permission, which means those are data managers who are able to generate data, write data, and modify data. The second group is read-only group. So for those people who are in the read-only group, they can access the data on the file system, but they can't really modify anything. This way, we actually protect the integrity of the data. We only give access to authorized person who really can manage the data. So there is also a social aspect of, of data access. Um, um, for a research project, we often see the embargo period that um, maybe after two years of the project, the data can be made available. Also, some researchers say, I want to share my data after my journal article 
uh, about this data set is published. So um, another example is from the Bureau of Meteorology. We have a data that there is a six months time delay between the data is being developed, verified, until it is being operational available on our thread server. So the second point I wanted to raise is um, our practice about implementing a persistent identifier. Often we experience some uh, frustration about when we give people the URL to access the data, it only valid for a certain period of time or only valid during the time that somebody can maintain it. Afterwards, we can't really guarantee. And also, the URL, the original URL, if you look at on the left-hand side of the slides, those are the metadata catalog URL or service endpoint URL. Let, let's um, look at the second one, which is service endpoint. So from this URL name convention, you can tell the later part, which include the project code, file pass, file name. Anything in this pass, for example, project code changed, of you, you rename the file, or we shuffle the file around, and this link will be broken. So the original URL that we provided here is not a very stable one. We adopt the product that CSRO developed some time ago about persistent identifier as a broker. So we now, most of the time, we give the external user the right-hand side of uh, the name convention. As you can see, we have four main categories after PID.nci.org.eu. Now we have data set, we have services, we have documentation, and we have vocabularies. The only thing keep it unique is the file identifier or UUID. It's, it's basically, as long as the identifier keeps the same, the URL on the right-hand side is pretty consistent. If anything changed in the original URL on the left-hand side, what we need to do is update the mapping inside of the PID services broker without interrupting the URL that we give to the external user. We have the technical implementation published in the Digital Science Journal, so you are welcome to have a look. Um, now I'm going to talk about the main data services that um, Keith really wanted me to address um, from NCS pers perspective. So I divided our the type of data service into two main groups. One is the o OGC services. I'm going to talk about more about what is OGC in a second. The other type of data services is more project step specific, such as we are one of the largest node in, Aust uh, in Southern Hemisphere as part of the Earth System Federation grid, which is the aggregation of climate model from Global Research Institute. So the way we provide data services is we copy the main uh, of the data model to serve for Australian users. Another fancy data service that I'm going to show you a bit more is called Jisky. It's a scalable data server that um, directly interact with our file system. So what is OGC? OGC is Open Geospatial Consortium. It is an international nonprofit organization to make quality open standards for global geospatial community. We find OGC standards quite useful for us because we have a lot of geospatial featured data and OGC have all sorts of standards for different type of mapping, feature, coverage, processing for us to use because it's so common and it's free for people to use and if we made the data available through OGC standards, a lot of people naturally can access our data. So that's the motivation. So what is OGC services? It's actually an API uh, in, in the middle between the data store and the user. So the user can request whatever available on OGC services. Let's say I want a map about the anomaly uh, across whole Australian continental and NCI host this data, but we, we host the data, we don't host images. What the LGC web services 
is do is he actually extracts the image and returns back to the user. And user can take the URL which contains the image of the data put on their own uh, web portal. For example, you can get the URL and copy and paste onto the national map to show the grades. So NCI has two main production data type service. One is the threads. So you can often find the threads available on our data catalog. This is the interface of the geo network. So the red circled link is the um, NCIS thread server. So you can open and click it. The second interface is the data catalog. They more or less contain the same information, but serving for different purposes. Geo network is mainly for data harvester for machine accessible. The data catalog is for human readable. So threads. In a short, uh, in a very simple term, is it's the data services which allow you to browse and access the data. So I've listed here six main type of services that Threads offer. The very first two, OpenDAP and NetCDF, is subset, subsetting the data. So we have a lot of very large data, but in practice, when scientists access the data, they don't necessarily have to access all the data. They might just need a very small piece of data from this big pool. So what the threads can offer is you can actually define your query and only get the data, the part that you want. So it really saves a lot of traffic on the internet. And this, the other two standard OGC web mapping services, web coverage services, is very popular for people to access the mapping and coverage directly out of our data. And of course, threads offer a very quick data viewer. If you don't know what this data is, you can have a quick look of what it is on the web without downloading it. it of course, the also threads offer the direct download if you really want to download the data. Another fancy scalable distributed data server that I was talking about is called Jisky. Jisky is the in-house NCI developed product. Um, what it does is we have a lot of data on a file system, millions, millions of files on a system. If we wanted to people to query this data, how? It's going to be very hard to create millions of metadata records for every single file. So what we've done is we use the crawler to crawl the file system, get the header of the file, and formulate as a database, metadata database. And then the database will be a query window for people to hand in the request. Say, give me a um, poly, uh, give me some images in the polygon at what at some time. So the um, so the metadata database actually includes those essential geospatial information and it returns back to you the user of what they requested. So we published recently a technical details of um, GSK implementation. You're more than welcome to have a look. La, um, um, the you, last you yeah, yeah, sorry, Jingbo, I, I think you're getting close to the end. I uh, just wanted to uh, ask you, you, there was only only about a minute or two left, so if you could uh, sure. work towards I'll the end. Sure, I'll quickly go through. Yes, yeah, so the last two points will be version data. Um, again, because of the scale of the data, we can't really um, store every single step of the data. So what we can do is we stop the raw data and the final version, and we keep the URI of the metadata in the middle step. So in that way, the provenance information was kept and also saved the storage. The last point of the quality data is, I would um, think somewhat, some users say, we can't really assume we can access data and the data is flawless. So by publishing data, aside with the quality report, we wanted to provide data access with a certain type of assurance. So we also have the publication that is in, going to be in place very soon. Thank you for your attention. Uh, that's our experiences so far about data access.